Hey guys, welcome back to MedBits Made Simple. In this video, we're going to see about functions of hypothalamus. Now let's begin. The functions of hypothalamus can be categorized into vegetative functions and endocrine functions. The vegetative functions include body temperature regulation, blood pressure regulation, body water regulation by thirst and increased water reabsorption from the kidneys, and feeding, which includes satiety and appetite regulation. Okay, satiety is the feeling of fullness which is felt after eating food, and appetite is the desire to eat food when you're hungry. These all are mediated by hypothalamus. The endocrine functions of hypothalamus includes increasing the growth, stimulating the thyroid hormone secretion, stimulating adrenal hormone secretion, and enhancing milk ejection from the breast during lactation, and increasing the uterine contraction during parturition. There are different nuclei in hypothalamus, and each nuclei has different functions. Okay. Now let's see about the cardiovascular activities which are controlled by hypothalamus. The posterior and lateral hypothalamus causes increase in blood pressure and heart rate. So when they sense a decrease in blood pressure and heart rate, what they basically do is they start to activate few mechanisms which basically serve to increase the blood pressure and heart rate. Okay, so they are very important in maintaining the blood pressure and heart rate. On contrary, there is an area known as preoptic area on the hypothalamus. They basically lead to decrease in blood pressure and heart rate. So, if there is an increase in blood pressure and heart rate, which is sensed by the preoptic area, they basically activate few mechanisms to decrease the blood pressure and heart rate. So, these are the main cardiovascular activities exerted by the hypothalamus. Next, a very important function of hypothalamus, it is thermoregulation, which is regulating the body temperature. These are mainly mediated by two main areas in the hypothalamus. One, the preoptic area, which is located anteriorly, and the posterior hypothalamus. The preoptic area, which is located anteriorly, senses the increase in body temperature. So, if there is an increase in body temperature, the preoptic area is activated. They then stimulate panting, sweating, and vasodilation. These are basically to reduce the heat inside the body. They'll cause heat loss, and thus they cause decrease in body temperature. And the posterior hypothalamus, what they what it does is basically they sense the decrease in blood decrease in blood body temperature. So, if there is decrease in body temperature, the posterior hypothalamus causes shivering and vasoconstriction. These mechanisms basically help to conserve the heat inside the body. Okay, so you would have noticed while you get fever, you will do shivering. So, that shivering basically increases the heat in the body. So, heat maintenance is achieved and the body temperatures increase with the help of posterior hypothalamus. Next, the hypothalamus also does regulation of body water. There is a center in hypothalamus known as the thirst center. So, they increase thirst if they detect increased concentration of blood. So, when the blood flowing to the thirst center in the hypothalamus is concentrated, that is um, not dilated, if it is concentrated, what happens is they basically stimulate the thirst center okay the thirst center what it does is basically it increases the thirst in the individual so they'll drink water and the blood is diluted okay and there is another mechanism by which hypothalamus controls the body water hypothalamus controls renal excretion of water how it does this is that the hypothalamus secrete a hormone known as antidiuretic hormone and this hormone is transferred to the posterior pituitary gland and it is stored here. When there is decreased body water, which is sensed by the hypothalamus, the anterior diuretic hormone is secreted from the posterior pituitary and it acts on the collecting ducts and collecting ducts in the renal um, the nephrons 
and it increases the water reabsorption. So basically, the hypothalamus increases the body water by the following two mechanisms, which I mentioned now. The hypothalamus also enhances milk ejection from the breast during lactation. Oxytocin is a hormone which is secreted in the hypothalamus. It is transferred to the posterior pituitary gland in the same way the anterior diuretic har anti diuretic hormone is transferred to the posterior pituitary from the hypothalamus, as I mentioned earlier. So, the oxytocin is stored in the posterior pituitary. When the baby suckles the breast during feeding, what happens is oxytocin is released from the posterior pituitary, and this oxytocin acts on the myoepithelial cells in the breast, uh, causing contraction of the myoepithelial cells, and this leads to ejection of the milk, and this is the way by which enhances the uh, feeding of the baby. And the other centers in hypothalamus, known as hunger center and satiety center. The stimulation of hunger center will increase the desire to eat food. The stimulation of satiety center opposes the desire, that is, it decreases the desire to eat food. Okay? So, basically, if you're hungry, you, you'll have the desire to eat food. That's because of the stimulation of hunger center in the hypothalamus. And when you're full, uh, what happens is the satiety center is activated and it decreases the desire to eat food. And there are something known as feeding reflexes. Okay, these are basically controlled by mammillary bodies in hypothalamus. Okay, mammillary bodies in hypothalamus control the feeding reflexes. So these reflexes are involuntarily controlled, uh, involuntarily mediated. They are not controlled by humans. So they take place by themselves. So when you chew food and uh, swallow, the swallowing part takes place involuntary, involuntarily without our control. So this is basically mediated by mammillary bodies of hypothalamus. The hypothalamus also helps in controlling the circadian rhythm. What is circadian rhythm? It is the physiological rhythms in body that happens in a cyclic pattern throughout the day in the 24 hours. It's basically controlled by light and darkness. The normal circadian rhythm is essential, very essential for normal functioning of human body. Now, the endocrine function of hypothalamus. The hypothalamus controls the pituitary, pituitary gland secretion of hormones. Okay? The hypothalamus secretes releasing hormones and inhibitory hormones from the hypothalamus and this reaches the anterior pituitary gland okay, via the capillaries, the, the blood vessels from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. So these hormones include growth hormone releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone and somatostatin. The growth hormone releasing hormone acts on the somatotropes, the anterior pituitary and increases the growth hormone secretion. The gonadotropin releasing hormone acts on the gonadotropes and in the anterior pituitary and stimulates the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. The somatostatin decreases the secretion of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary. Now, the posterior pituitary hormones are not secreted by the posterior pituitary itself. These hormones are basically secreted from the hypothalamus and they are transferred to the posterior pituitary. And they are stored here and released whenever required. In addition to the above mentioned um, functions of hypothalamus, the hypothalamus also helps to control various emotions such as increase in activity, um, such as during rage and fighting and some centers in hypothalamus can cause decrease in activity such as tranquility and being calm and they can also control fear and punishment reactions and sexual drive is also controlled by hypothalamus. So, in various hypothalamic lesions or hypothalamic diseases, what happens is, based on the site of hypothalamus which is involved, the clinical features vary. So, in certain sites involvement, what happens is, there is decreased appetite, thirst, and they can, even this can lead to severe starvation and even death of the individual. When the satiety center 
is affected the patient won't full the patient won't feel full after eating so there will be increased appetite thirst and this can lead to severe obesity and this can be fatal too as i've told the clinical features of the hypothalamic lesions are based on the side affected on the hypothalamus okay download our lecture slides on our patreon page and there are much more cool features waiting for you on our patreon page visit patreon.com slash made which made simple and just click on the link in the description to go to the site thanks for watching please subscribe to our youtube channel made which made simple and follow us on facebook twitter instagram and google plus and support us by donating on patreon thank you